guest host on uh, religious radio that is not quite right. Mm -hmm. Get it? Wink, wink. Yeah. I'm joined with John Music, the sidekick, as always. And we are excited to have uh, Professor Randy Balmer on the line. Randy. Hey, Tony. How are you? Good. I am so glad that you have joined us. Uh, Randall Balmer is the professor of religion at uh, Columbia University, and he's, you know, you just look at his bio, and it's just super impressive. <laughs> Books and teaching. You taught, at my, you taught at my alma mater, Dartmouth College, I see on your, uh, on your resume here. Well, and uh, I guess the, the secret uh, is, is going to be out now. I'm uh, heading to Dartmouth this summer as, a, as a, an endowed chair, actually. Is that right? So, Yes, I am. Well, fantastic. Am. Well, you know, Randall, maybe if you just tried a little bit harder, you could really make something of your life. <laughs> <laughs> if you just studied studied a little bit more. <laughs> oh, well, you can always study a little bit more, as you know. <laughs> that, what a great – that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that because I'm a big fan of Jeff Charlotte, and he's recently joined the uh, yes. um, the Dartmouth faculty. But, hey, that's a, that's another radio show, how great Dartmouth okay. is. Okay. Um, you know what? One of the things I love about uh, I, I was trying to explain to to John, the sidekick here before the show, uh, why I was so excited about having you on. And one of the things that excites me is that, you know, there are a lot of people who teach religious history at seminaries and colleges and universities. But um, while that's kind of where you've got your street cred, you uh, are very involved in the in the conversation about what's going on in culture today and so much so that you know you're writing uh documentary shows that are on pbs you're not just uh you're not just uh, uh adding to your cv in professor land is what i'm saying so uh i hope today to talk to you about um politics sure uh, something you think a lot about <laughs> and yeah. Can I just go back up just for a second yeah, and say shoot. something about what, you, about what you just said? Uh, and I hope you don't mind my doing this, but uh, I, I made a decision when I went to grad school in, in 1980 that I never wanted my work to become so recondite, so obscure, that I couldn't speak to a general audience. And so beginning in, in graduate school, I, I was uh, developed the discipline of trying to speak to a much broader audience uh, in addition to fellow academics. And I happen to think that one of the reasons that we as a nation are in the Straits we're in right now is that too many academics uh, only want to speak with one another and they don't want to reach outside the academy. So I guess I see it as something of my uh, calling, almost a missionary calling in some ways. Uh, so that that, that uh, sets up a little bit more what you were just saying. Yeah, well, I, you've been very successful at that, and uh, it's it's what I'd like to turn the conversation to uh, after the break. Uh, I want to talk to you about our current slate of uh, Republican candidates for president. But uh, in this sec segment, I'd really like to hear from you what you think uh, of Obama and particularly what President Obama has done regarding faith. And I'll set it up a little bit by saying, you know, people can go online and find find a, uh, an interview where you went on The Daily Show, which is, I mean, kind of slumming it for somebody who's on Doug Padgett Radio. But you were on The da Daily Show less, less than a month after Obama's uh, inauguration. Uh, and you talked with John Stewart about Obama being really being a faithful Christian president, but in a different way than George W. Bush was. Well, here we are a few years later, and um, you know, recently in the news, Randy, uh, the president has taken some heat uh, because, like for instance, his you know his little posse of faith people has kind of gone dormant of late, um, and. Other than, you know, making his appearance at the National Prayer Breakfast every year, faith hasn't seemed, in my uh, uh, estimation, to have played as big a role in his administration as it, ha as it did in his campaign. Well, I think I, 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 I'm not going to uh, quarrel with that too much, but, but I think it's, it's somewhat a matter of perception. And I think also we have to understand that, um, that Barack Obama comes to this question from a far different angle than those uh, who are uh, we associate with the religious right. Uh, and so I happen to think that the health care initiative, the Affordable Health Care Act, was a step in the direction of embodying his faith for, for him. Now, 
Uh, no, I, I'm willing to acknowledge that uh, the Republican uh, contenders for his job see things differently, and, yeah. and that's part of a broader conversation we're having as a nation over the course of this year. But I, I happen to think that uh, that the president is is acting on his his convictions. And you mentioned the prayer breakfast, and I agree that, that these are largely symbolic occasions. But if you look carefully what he says at these prayer breakfasts, this is a man of faith, and uh, it may not be. Uh, fundamentalist style faith, or even strictly speaking, an evangelical style faith. Although I think there are elements of that in there, but you look also at, uh, for example, his uh, Nobel Peace, Peace, Pri- Peace Prize acceptance speech, and this was a man with a remarkable grasp of theology, uh, invoking Niebuhr, invoking the whole tradition of Christian realism. And I acknowledge that not everybody's going to agree with him, or be even with his theology, much less his politics. But uh, I, I, I come away from the, the first term, or three years in the first term, with a sense that uh, this is a man who, who does have a, a theological grounding, and it, 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 is, it is shaping his, his policies and the way he goes about his job. A lot of, a lot of people, um, uh, pundits talk, uh, who, who are sympathetic to President Obama and, and the way that he expresses his faith, kind of say that he is a politician living out kind of a, a, a Niebuhr, a Reinhold Niebuhr kind of uh, ethic in the, in the presidency. Can you give us a thumbnail sketch of what, what when people sure. say that, what they mean by that? Sure. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a theologian. I'm not a philosopher either, by any stretch of imagination. But uh, Reinhold Niebuhr was uh, a very important theologian in the 20th century, arguably the most important theologian in the 20th century, with possible exception of Karl Barth. And uh, Niebuhr was... Uh, chastened by by the destruction, by the carnage of World War One and certainly World War Two, and he came away from that and developed a position that is generally called Christian realism, which states that in a fallen world, and this is you know this is Orthodox Christian theology. There's nothing nothing a suspect there at all. But in a fallen world, it is sometimes necessary to, uh, to deploy the use of force in order to restrain evil. And this uh, certainly goes back to Luther. It certainly goes back to the whole just war tradition. And what I heard in that uh, Nobel Peace Prize speech on the part of the president uh, was somebody who understood that. Uh, you remember this was a very, very difficult uh, and almost embarrassing situation for him to be yeah, <laughs> uh, right. awarded the Peace Prize uh, only uh, a few months into his presidency and while he was uh, commander-in-chief of, uh, of a nation that at war in two different places. But I think he rose to the occasion, and uh, his in, his invocation of uh, Niburian uh, theology and ethics, I think, served him very well in, in that situation, and I think has, has informed his his understanding of war. I think um, I'm going on and on here, and, and, and no, please interrupt me if you want to, but, but I, I think uh, last week, the news conference in which he, I think, absolutely rightly uh, took issue with all the saber-rattling we hear from the Republican um, candidates for the for for the presidential nomination, and said, and he said, you know, let's let's be sober here. Yeah, the decision to engage, to engage in in military uh, conflict is something that uh, must never be undertaken lightly. Yeah, and, I'm good. Uh, I'm... You know, let's 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 have some. Uh, 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 some cooler heads here. All right, Rand, that, that's a helpful background. Randy, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with you, and I really can't wait to hear what you think about these Republicans. This is Tony Jones, guest host on Doug Paget Radio. Trim your nose hair. Eat bacon. Cuddle. These are